Hello everybody and welcome back to another rep for Ice video. Today we're going to be doing an IGCSE biology guide on one of the hardest units that students find to do. Now this unit doesn't appear too often in tests, but when it does it causes a lot of troubles and that is because it requires a lot of sophisticated terminology and a very good understanding about the topic. Now this topic, as you can tell from the title, is synapses. Now synapses is located in unit 2, structure and function in living organisms, more specifically the coordination and response subunit. This subunit has a ton of content, but synapsis is the one that many students find the most difficult in here because it requires a very strong understanding. This video will give a brief and detailed guide about how to answer questions involving synapses and how the synapses actually work. Now, before we go into any content, we need to establish some prior understanding because synapses aren't as simple as where you can just understand it off the get-go. You need some prior understanding about neur neurons and nerves before you go into it. Now the first thing you need to know is that information is sent through the nervous system in the human body as electrical impulses. Now these are electrical signals that pass along nerve cells known as neurons. And a group of neurons is what you call a nerve. Another thing that you need to know is a general understanding of the structure of a neuron. Now while this is much less important than the other ones, it is something that you will end up needing to know for the rest of your GCSE syllabus. So I still would recommend that before you watch this video, just have a brief look at the structure of a neuron. Um, there are a few points that you'll only understand if you actually know how a neuron cell looks and what its different parts, what their functions are. And the final thing you need to know, well, this is not compulsory to know, but it's another thing that you should really know before you watch this video, is the two different arcs, one that's reflex and one that's non-reflex. For the reflex one, we can see how it goes from stimulus to the sensory neuron to the relay neuron to the motor neuron, and then to the effector, whatever it is giving a response. And for the non-reflex, we can see how it's the same thing, except it involves the central nervous system for a response. And as we all know, the central nervous system involves the brain and the spinal cord. Okay, now that we've established the prerequisite information, we can go straight into it and ask what is a synapse and give a general understanding. So the first piece of key understanding that you need to know is that neurons don't actually come into direct contact with each other. See, the thing is, at the location where two neurons meet, a junction known as a synapse is formed. Now, if you want to get into specifics, it's actually the location where the dendrites of two neurons meet, and that's where your knowledge of the structure of a the neuron might uh, benefit you. But for GCSE, all you need to know is a synapse is the junction where two neurons meet. Now, within this junction, a small gap is formed between the two neurons, and this is what we call the synaptic cleft, or the synaptic gap. Now, these electrical impulses that we established before that are sent along these neurons aren't able to cross the gap. They can't jump across this gap, so how do we get it across? The electrical impulses need to be converted into chemical signals in order to cross the synaptic cleft. And this is where our second key word comes into play, neurotransmitters. But what are neurotransmitters? Well, neurotransmitters can be defined as the chemical signaling molecules that are used to transfer the signal between neurons at a synapse. Essentially, they're the molecules that help these electrical signals become transferred into chemical signals, allowing them to cross the synaptic cleft. After the neurotransmitters cross the synaptic cleft and reach the neuron on the other side, they're converted back into electrical impulse, so they don't stay as neurotransmitters. The only time neurotransmitters are necessary is when you're crossing the synaptic cleft. And as we can see on the image on the right, we can see that those little orange molecules between the synapse, the two neurons in the synaptic cleft, we can see those are actually neurotransmitters and they're transferring the information between one neuron to the other. All right, now that we've established all that we need to establish, we can go into the real brute content of this unit, which is the process of crossing the synapse. I've listed everything down with all the keywords, all the key understandings, so please bear with me as I explain it. So, at a synapse, an electrical signal travels down the presynaptic neuron. Now, the presynaptic neuron is, as indicated by the name, presynaptic, before the synapse. It's the first neuron. It's the neuron that first receives electrical signal, and the neuron that wants to convert its electrical signal into neurotransmitters so that it can reach the other neuron. So, as you can see by the image here, yes, this is a presynaptic neuron. Now, specifically in the presynaptic neuron, the electrical signal travels down the axon. And um, I don't need to explain this. I'm sure you guys know it if you're caught up with your structure of a neuron. So yeah. 
This electrical signal causes the end of the presynaptic neuron to release chemical messengers called neurotransmitters, and they release these neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft or the synapse. Now, uh, this is just simple to understand. The electrical signal basically stimulates the end of the presynaptic neuron to release the neurotransmitters into the synapse. Now, next up, the neurotransmitters diffuse across the synaptic cleft. Well, you might wonder why I have diffuse across in bold. I mean, it's pretty simple compared to the rest of the words I have in bold, but this one's in caps as well, and diffusion is very simple to understand. So why do I have it in caps and bold? Well, diffuse across is the key term that's going to get you your marks for this question. It's the term that is always in the mark scheme and shows that you understand how neurotransmitters go across the synaptic cleft. Because neurotransmitters don't walk across, they don't fly across, they don't just go across, they diffuse across. You have to say they diffuse across to so remember that. The neurotransmitters then attach to receptor molecules which are located on the membrane of the postsynaptic neuron. Now, postsynaptic neuron, I'm sure we can all guess what that is. It's the neuron that comes postsynaptic after the synapse. It's the end neuron in the two neuron sequence, the end neuron in the synapse, and it's, it's the second neuron essentially. Now, the receptor molecules are located on the membrane of this postsynaptic neuron. And the receptor molecules, essentially their role is to receive the neurotransmitters. And one thing to note is that these receptor molecules that are located on the second neuron, they only bind to the specific neurotransmitters released from the first neuron. So that's one thing to note. They won't bind to any other uh, neurotransmitters from any other neurons, only the ones that are received from the first neuron. This triggers an electrical impulse in the second neuron, the postsynaptic neuron. So now we're back to an electrical impulse. See, we started with an electrical impulse traveling down the presynaptic neuron. We made it a chemical messenger by using the neurotransmitters to travel across the synaptic cleft, and now we're back to electrical impulse. So it's completed. And to end it, one thing to note is that the neurotransmitters actually are destroyed at the end of the sequence as to prevent repeated stimulation of the second neuron, as if they were left there the presence of the neurotransmitters would keep repeating electrical impulses, which would keep you doing the same reflexes or same action, which would be terrible for you. So, yeah, that's it. And just like that, we are done. I hope you guys got a great understanding of how synapses work, what are neurotransmitters, and I hope you guys understood all the key terminology. Please leave a comment if you don't understand anything, and I'll be sure to comment as soon as possible. Good luck in your marks and good luck in your final GCSEs. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and see you guys next time.